and welcome to July's episode of Scotland Shop on the Sofa. This month we've been exploring all things Clan McLaren and it's been a joy to find out about this resilient and ancient clan. We've had a lot of fun learning about the Clan McLaren but sadly we're not experts, as much as we wish we were. Please let us know if there's anything you think we've got wrong or if we've missed anything out. We'd also love to hear from you if you have a link to the Clan McLaren. Reach out in the comments or drop us a message and let us know what being part of the clan and sharing this heritage means to you. As always, we'd like to start at the beginning with a bit about the birth of the clan. The origins of Clan McLaren are somewhat shadowy and mysterious. One popular story says that the McLarens are descended from a man called Lorne, son of Eric, who landed in Argyll in 1503 AD. It seems more likely, however, that the McLaren clan originated from a branch of a Celtic dynasty and took their name from a 13th century abbot, Lawrence Labran of Actau, who lived in the small village of Balkida, which is now acknowledged as the historic seat and traditional territory of the McLarens. You can find Balkida in Persia, about 10 miles northwest of Kalandar. It is overlooked by the strikingly hilly terrain of the Braes of Balkida and bordered to the west of the picturesque Loch Voile. Nowadays, it is a popular place for locals and tourists alike to hike, fish and enjoy some tranquillity and fresh air. However, it wasn't always so peaceful. The McLarens first came to occupy Balkida in 9th century and settled there until 1558, when they encountered a calculated and merciless attack. Following a campaign of pressure from the Campbells, Clan MacGregor launched a crusade against the McLarens raiding numerous homes and murdering countless clan members, including the chief. This allowed the MacGregors to take possession of the McLaren territories. Finding themselves suddenly without a chief or lands, Clan McLaren was unable to produce a legal title to the ancestral homelands. This made them formally chiefless and landless. While this was surely a bitter defeat, in some ways it also reflected the great nobility and dignity of the clan. The McLarens appealed to the Campbells for help after a savage attack, but the Campbells would only agree to help if the McLarens would acknowledge them as a superior clan. That's a bit rude. <laughs> it's just a, it's just a, a little bit, bit slap like... in the face. Yeah. Okay, calm your ego, Campbells. <laughs> the McLarens refused to allow this final humiliation and so lost their lands to the McGregors, but arguably maintained their dignity and their pride. You'll be relieved to hear that Clan McLaren did eventually manage to even the score when in 1957 Donald McLaren successfully matriculated his arms at the Lion Court and purchased land in Balkida, becoming the clan chief and reversing the chiefless and landless status. Part of the land he bought even included Creek and Took or the Boar's Rock. The old McLaren rallying point and the inspiration for their traditional war cry. Another site in Balkida that is steeped in McLaren history is the old kirk on the north side of the glen. It is now dedicated to Clan McLaren with a plaque reading for the generations of McLarens, their place of worship and within whose walls their chiefs are buried. Quite a nice little thing to go yeah. visit, it's lovely. The first known church on the site is Eagle Beak or Little Church holds particular significance to the McLarens as it was built around 1250 by the previously mentioned Abbot Labran, the progenitor of the clan. The abbot claimed that the right of his heirs to be buried within the church, so to this day you can find numerous McLaren graves in the courtyard. In 1631 the Little Church was replaced on the same site what is now called the Old Church, whose ruins still stand in the courtyard. Then later, in 1855, the old church was replaced by the parish church, which stands to its north. It is open to visitors today and still contains a wealth of knowledge about Clan McLaren, with plaques, information boards and even a monument dedicated to the clan. It is definitely well worth a visit. My list is getting longer and yeah. longer. <laughs> Another place that holds great significance in the history of Clan McLaren is Culloden Battlefield the site of one of the most famous battles in Scottish history in which many McLarens sadly lost their lives. On the 16th of April 1746, Jacobite supporters seeking to restore the Stuart monarchy to the throne gathered to fight the Duke of Cumberland's government troops on Drumossie Moor. 
They were a powerful army and up until that point undefeated. However, on this day they were exhausted. They were weary from a long march and weak due to their dwindling food rations. They found themselves shockingly outmatched in almost all ways as the Duke of Cumberland's army was well rested, better fed and bigger. In less than an hour the battle was over with the Jacobites bitterly defeated. Another one to add to the list if you haven't been. <laughs> I think they probably spent more time travelling than they did fighting. Yeah, definitely. Many McLarens served on the Jacobite side in this battle under the Appen Regiment and the Apple Brigade. The clan even provided two officers, Captain Donald McLaren of Inverneti, Inverneti, who was wounded at Culloden and captured but escaped, and the regimental surgeon Dr. Lachlan McLaren of Apen. Apen. Many people visit the battleground to this day to learn more about the notorious event and pay their respects to the fallen ancestors. Clodden Visitor Centre stands beside the battlefield. It is a must-see that features artefacts from both sides of the battle and an interactive displays which explain their background to the conflict. We'd love to know if you decide to visit and as we're sure you'll find out about the deeply poignant experience. You can see headstones that mark the graves of hundreds of men who have given their lives for the Jacobite cause and a memorial cairn which honours the fallen. This eerie and desolate mirror is a key place to see if you're interested in exploring McLaren history further. Again, the list gets longer. <laughs> We're off to explore Scotland. Yeah. Now we'd like to discuss some of the most significant McLaren names. It seems only right to start with the current clan chief, Donald McLaren. So Donald became the chief in 1966. He went to school in Oxford and Perthshire, where he learned to play the pipes and later attended the University of Edinburgh, where he took an MA honours degree in classics and English and he also played rugby for the combined Scottish Universities 15. He joined the Foreign and Commonwealth Office in 1978 and held postings in Berlin, Moscow, Havana, Caracas and Kiev. He also served in Tbilisi, Georgia as Her Majesty's Ambassador. Donald married Maida Jane Aitchison in 1978. They have three sons and two daughters, Donald, Florian, Louis, Iona and Marina, and a granddaughter, Anna. Their eldest son Donald has served with the British Army in Iraq and as a Royal Marines Commando in Afghanistan. Now retired from the diplomatic service, the chief lives in Balkida with his wife Maida and their children in the heart of the ancient McLaren territory. We were touched to find that the clan has overcome such a challenging and turbulent history and now have a chief living in their traditional lands. It goes to show that the McLaren's resilient and powerful reputation is undeniably deserved. It's really sweet, isn't it? It is, it's the combat. It's very, pa very patriotic. As well as being tenacious and prevailing, the McLarens are also industrious. Did you know that the McLaren clan played a key role in the development of the Scout Association? The Scouts aim to foster fun, adventure, and skills for life and give young people the opportunity to enjoy new adventures whilst experiencing the outdoors. We can see the clan connection here very clearly. The Scout Association was formed in 1908 with Major Kenneth McLaren as first secretary. Kenneth was the son of H. McLaren of Chalet, Tynebruch, Argyllshire, and was educated at Harrow and Sandhurst. Before working for the Scouts, McLaren had an illustrious military career. He was posted to India and later South Africa. Again, probably very well travelled. Yeah, absolutely. Where he was briefly wounded at the Siege of Mafeking in March 1900 and was taken prisoner by the Boers. He was made a Companion of the Distinguished Service Order, or DSO, in November 1900. He also played polo throughout his military service and was even an umpire of one of the two matches in 1908 London Olympics. A few years after the Scout Association was formed, it was decided that they needed a base where they could train the leaders. This is where another notable McLaren joins the story. William F. Du Bois McLaren, who was a Scout Commissioner from Glasgow, it's not a very Glasgow name, is it? It's not, it's a bit <laughs> French in there. Uh, he heard of the need for new grounds and generously purchased a derelict estate an hour outside of London named Gilwell Park. Once the estate was officially opened, the staff members wore McLaren modern neckerchiefs to honour William's kind gift and great influence in the continued popularity of the Scouting Association. By the mid-1920s, the neckerchiefs featured a strip of McLaren modern tartan 
and were adopted as part of the official uniform of the Scouts. These are still worn by Scouts today in over 120 countries around the world. The connection the Scouts have to Clan McLaren is so strong that any Scout who completes their wood badge, which apparently is about leadership, not wood, is entitled to join the Clan Society as an associate member. We find it inspiring to hear how the McLaren generosity has contributed to so many happy childhood memories. Other notable McLarens have taken slightly more glamorous paths in life. Mary McLaren, who was born on 19th of January 1900, was an American actress who appeared in more than 170 films between 1916 and 1949. She was born in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, but moved to New York with her mother Lillian and her two sisters in 1913. Mary found almost immediate success in entertainment, beginning her stage career in the Winter Garden with Al Johnson in Passing Show in 1914 and Dancing Around. She launched her screen career in 1916 with Shoes and continued to land notable roles consistently in the following decades. It seemed that she had inherited some of the key McLaren traits, as she was well known for her physical strength and abilities, being an accomplished swimmer and tennis player too. Quite a few talents. Uh, yeah, hidden talents. <laughs> Perhaps even more striking, however, is her perseverance and resilience. While many actors of the silent era faded into irrelevance once talkies hit the film industry, Mary successfully transitioned into sound productions and continued to perform periodically <laughs> in films throughout the 1930s and into the early 1940s. The McLarens have also gained success in sport, with one key example being Alan James McLaren. Alan was born in Edinburgh in 1971 and went on to become a highly skilled footballer. He started his career with Heart of Midlothian in 1987 and played in over 180 matches with the club. In 1994, he moved to Rangers as part of a £2 million deal. He quickly proved that he, would, he had been worth the high price helping to beat Celtic 3-1 in his debut match. Sadly, he was forced to retire from football in 1998, aged just 27, due to injury. He went out on a high note, however, playing as captain in his final appearance with the team, beating Dundee United 1-0 and helping Rangers to secure their ninth title in a row. 27 is a very nice age to retire, I yeah. think. <laughs> we have with that. <laughs> Another sporting legend you may have heard of is Bruce McLaren, a racing car driver and designer from New Zealand. Bruce's parents, Les and Ruth McLaren, ran a service station, so young Bruce grew up surrounded by cars and mechanics. He entered his first racing competition in 1952 at the age of only 14, and by mid-50s was racing on the Cooper team. He won numerous Grand Prix titles with Cooper and his career blossomed. However, his real legacy was born when he founded Bruce McLaren Racing LTD in 1963 and began producing his own F1 cars. In 1965, he resigned from the Cooper team and formed the iconic F1 McLaren Racing Team. To this day, he is admired for his innovative and aesthetic designs and the impact on the world of Formula One racing. I mean, you surely know McLaren and when yes, it comes to F1 racing. racing. Yeah. The McLarens have also made a name for themselves in politics. Andrew McLaren was born in Glasgow in 1883. As he grew up, he found himself deeply troubled by the poverty and deprivation he observed around him. He was determined to make a difference, so in 1914 he moved to London and joined the Labour Party. He served as an MP for Burslem in 1922-23, 1924-31 and 1935-45 and often travelled around the most disadvantaged parts of the country to raise awareness in the government of the hardship suffered by many. He was also a talented painter. One of his portraits of Neville Chamberlain can be seen in the National Portrait Gallery in Edinburgh. It's safe to say that the McLarens are a multi-talented bunch and if you're lucky enough to have McLaren blood, we hope you feel inspired reading about some of the achievements of your peers. We could talk about Clan McLaren all day, but sadly we're running out of time in this episode. Before we go though, we need to tell you a little bit about our favourite thing here at Scotland Shop, the tartan. We have three types variations of the McLaren tartan, ancient, modern and weathered. The McLaren tartan is mostly green and blue with yellow and red lines. So we've got the ancient one here and we're wearing the modern and this is the modern too. Each of these variations offers a different strength and tone of colour, so you're sure to find something that will suit you. 
I like, like it. Yeah. yeah. I like this one. Yeah, I like the mother. But both look quite nice. Yeah. The weather's nice too. Yeah. We hope you've enjoyed this tour through the history of Clan McLaren. There's much more that we would like to have shared, but we couldn't fit it all in. So if you'd like to find out even more about the clan, please do pay a visit to our newly updated clan page on our website, as well as our blog posts. You can also test your knowledge on all things McLaren with our quiz. And to stay updated on all our clan content, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, email newsletter and our social media.